Inspector, uh, I was surprised from reading surprises, my old word, uh, when I was reading the, uh, the Epstein book. I was telling your wife, I had, a, I had heard a lot about Spectre. I assumed he um, had a lot of ambition, I was told, very aggressive man, and I was tremendously impressed with, uh, with the job he did on the Cohen, the Ray Cohen trial. That's about all I knew of him, but I had assumed uh, that he was a, a man of intellectual honesty. I would like to say, Jason, that um, you have to think in terms of level of levels of integrity here, and you have to think of roles. And I'm sure that the Spectre is a man of intellectual honesty and integrity. Uh, it's a question of first things first, and which loyalties come first here. I think the Spectre made some um, very serious errors in his interpretation of the shots, trajectories, and wounds of the assassination of Kennedy. I I think that uh, Spectre is an enormously intelligent young man, and consequently, I would have to believe that he knew some of the problems of the evidence. Excuse me. Hello, Salandria. Yes. Yes. Sorry. So I have to conclude that since he was indeed, uh, it is indeed an intelligent man, that he knew there were problems here. I have to conclude that uh, he recognized the need for three shots and one assassin, and that he recognized his task and his job to be representing the commission, which in turn, by its mandate, represented the president. Well, you just you, right there is where you lost me. Uh, your first statement and your in the second statement, mm -hmm. you say uh, you have to re you, you recognize uh, the Yeah, I, I think it's a the question nature. of loyalties. And I'm suggesting, Gaten, that his, his first loyalty here was to the Commission, which in turn had the job of representing the President with respect to the investigation of the assassination. Now, there are other loyalties a man can have. For example, uh, loyalties to fundamental truth, no matter where it goes. I think that came. Fundamental, concrete, objective truth. What actually happened. That must have come somewhere secondary to the other loyalty. Now, that doesn't mean that Mr. Spector doesn't have integrity. It means that he has loyalties to a job which supersedes the hunt for fundamental truth. And I think that the, the loyalty superseded the hunt for truth. That confuses you. Well, it confuses me too, because uh, I'm a peasant type, and when I look at uh, evidence, uh, I think in terms, and I try to think in terms of what happened. I try to think in terms of something concrete having happened. And if it was an objective happening, ascertainable facts are there, which if you dig hard enough, you will find. And from those facts, you can draw certain inferences. I suggest that um, the Spectre and the Commission, at least part of the Commission, certainly Spectre, are working out on this evidence, had a predetermined predispos uh, predisposition to arrive at certain inferences irrespective of what the evidence was. Now you consider that lacking in integrity. Well, I think that's one way of looking at it. Well, I think that if you put yourself in the role of specter at this time, and insofar as I can empathize with that kind of position, he took a job. He conceived of himself as working for 
a governmental organization which in turn represented uh, the president and had a specific task. And that, within that framework, he worked. And in that role, he saw himself. In that role, he did a job which he considered a good one, and which was internally consistent because he had an assignment. And that assignment was, I'm afraid, had to be that there was one assassin, one gun, stationed in the rear of the Texas Book Depository Building. And that, therefore, no matter what the evidence, the ultimate inference would be that. That's how I suspect his role here. In a certain <coughs> context, he has integrity. He served his employer. He thinks he served the country. I think he served the government. <coughs> In effect, though, he put his name to a document, uh, so forth, only from what I can judge from having read the Epstein book and uh, your article in the legal, uh, which I and everyone else had assumed would present all the evidence and then draw conclusions from that evidence. It didn't do this. Please. It certainly did not do that. I think I can point out to you here evidence which is so dramatic that I'll show you that was not considered at all by Spectre and yet was in, within his province. Which I'm afraid he had to see. Because it, it, no one can look and not see this evidence. And yet it was not seen, it was not considered. Um, I have to think that this failure to see and this failure to consider was deliberate. But it was within a context of a role he saw himself playing. He was serving a governmental organization which, notwithstanding any other contentions, in my opinion at any rate, had a purpose, a specific purpose, which was a, not to investigate all aspects of the assassination, but on the contrary, was to conclude that this was an assassination which was apolitical, in effect, and was the act of one man. This is the role which he did brilliantly, but it had nothing to do with the evidence. The evidence, which in any way contradicted this inference of one assassin, and there was very, very weighty, I think ultimately compelling and conclusive evidence to the effect that there was more than one assassin. Any such evidence was ignored. Now, let me show you one specific point, which I think will help to clear this up. Uh, you'll have to turn it off. The essence of the book uh, turns on the matter which I discussed in my article of mm -hmm. April, oh no, I'm sorry, March, Liberation, 1965, which uh, shows that the autopsy face uh, sheet, the Commission Exhibit 397, indicates a back hit, mm -hmm. which is lower than a neck hit, which is the front hit. And then in lieu of the x-rays and photographs, which were the primary evidence and the only admissible evidence in any courtroom, in lieu thereof, which were never shown at a commission, they produced commission exhibits 385 and 386, which contradicted the face sheet, contradicted the FBI evidence with respect to where the holes were in the clothing, in the shirt, and the coat of the president, contradicted the Secret Service agents who uh, saw the bullet going in. Lenny Bennett says it's four inches below the shoulder. Clint Hill 
Uh, Quentin Hills was a Secret Service agent at the autopsy who indicated that the bullet the wound was six inches down from the neck. Uh, Kellerman and Greer, Secret Service agents, also at, uh, present at the uh, autopsy. Now, this is pretty dramatic, and Epstein builds his whole book on this point. But there's even more dramatic material, which he never considered, which is something curious about Epstein's book, I think. But look. The killing shot on the president was the head hit. Uh, the head hit is dramatically shown by the United Scooter's motion pictures, frame 313. Now, volume 18 of the notes of testimony um, indicates the Zapruder film, Commission Exhibit 85. Now, 313 thereof shows you the president being hit. 313. Now that's a crucial picture because the commission concluded that that was the fatal hit. Flight magazine carried that very dramatically in its, uh, sub its issue, which was filed subsequent to the commission report, October 2nd, 1964. And here is that picture. Here, 313. Well, I looked at that magazine, knowing that the head hit was the crucial hit, and read the caption relating to that hit. The assassin shot struck the right rear portion of the president's skull, causing a massive wound and snapping his head to one side. But there's a problem there because the hit is supposed to come from the rear. It's supposed to make a hole in the exhibit as described in this, I think I showed you, 386, which hole, incidentally, is not seen by 10 out of the 10 doctors who inspect the back of the skull at Parkland Hospital and one nurse out of one nurse. We don't see this in the but the commission absolutely needs it because without that hole, hole, right, then you have an entry on the side and no entry in the back, and therefore you have more than one assassin. Now, Light Magazine says that that head was snapped to one side, which is curious because according to Newton's third law of motion, any action has an, an equal and opposite reaction, and the opposite reaction to a hip registering from the back would be a forward motion. But there was a snap to the side. Now, Life Magazine recognized it had such a problem because, well, this doesn't show it, but it changed the caption. The assassin shot struck the right rear portion of the president's skull, causing a massive wound and snapping its head to one side. You see the same magazine, the same caption, and but the different caption. That's not all. Turn that off, I'll get you another magazine. Okay. That's not hard because, you see, the same magazine, and they overcorrect it because here you see what actually happens. You see, they remove the 313 picture, and they'll insert another one. Now that I think is the most dramatic refutation of the commission case because now you see the direction in which the president is going. And I went to Washington, examined the films at the archives for a whole day, and saw so very dramatically the president thus before the hit. And then receiving that hit and pivoting leftward, backward, thumping up against the back of the car and then into his wife's arms. Pretty clearly, from the hit delivered right forward. Otherwise, you violate Newton's third law of physics. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Now, let me show you. This step in the beginning. Okay. Well, this is where he, he supposedly got. Uh, now. 
This is what I don't understand. This. Well, the president was first struck, the commission says, in the back. Now, if you read my articles, you find out that this represents serious problems because you see he's erect. And Zapruder films and Willis films and much more films and Nix films and all he's the most photographed assassination in the history of man. But well, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. The commission says the president was this is the first bullet. Yes. Well, my contention is that this represents right. two hits. One in the back, one in the front. Now, according to the commission, this is the first bullet. This is we're yeah, not getting hit. And this is also where Connolly is supposed to have gotten hit. Right. Now I've written two articles on the three articles on the Connolly hit, really. Um, this is Spectre's unique contribution. And this has nothing to do with the head hit. And we can go into this, but would you mind if I just deal with the head hit just for a moment, and then I'll go right over to that. Mm -hmm. But let's Excuse me. So, just uh, attend to this head hit. That if you look after 313, you'll see what's happening to the president. He's pivoting. You see him pivoting there? And you get a picture here. And ultimately ends up on his side. Mm -hmm. From a hit which impacts on his skull and explodes his skull out. Now, to illustrate, this is, take that for a moment as the president's skull. And if these blocks get hit in the back, they have to be forward as they must. Forward. The only thing that will drive them left and backward is a hit from that direction. It's a question of fundamental physics. Well, wouldn't a hit here, yes, coming from an angle? No. Uh, it's essentially the right backward to hit. No, it could not. The best it could do is drive them in that direction, but not back. And that's that. that. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Utterly impossible. Mm -hmm. I've consulted with physicists, and it's just a high school physics, as I describe in my uh, articles. It's not complicated physics. It's Newton's third law of motion. Now, this is a problem for the commission. And yet the commission never considered this problem. Never discussed it. And yet there it is, and I'm sure Mr. Spector saw it. And since this was his province, he saw the motion pictures. Here they are. And Life Magazine recognized the problem by in mid-course switching the captions and the pictures, you'll notice. Uh, Have you spoken with anyone at Life? I had a letter directed to them on the basis of two magazines indicating that there was a, a difference in the pictures, not discussing the captions, and they gave me a reply saying that uh, they thought they would that first put this picture in and they recognized how important this picture is, and they put that picture in, but never discussing the um, caption changes and not giving any explanation which would encompass those. And I didn't provide them with the additional information that they had uh, changed their captions, and they evidently uh, assumed that I didn't have that additional information. Um, well, this is, I think, a very dramatic thing. And there are, of course, many other problems with respect to this head hit. As I have pointed out to you, if you read this article, there are ten doctors indicated here who discuss that hole in the back that doesn't exist. And each one says no to Spectre. Each one. This is the Commission's own testimony. Own testimony. All of this is. Mm -hmm. In addition, you have in the autopsy proper, the statement that the complexity of these fractures and the fragments thus produced in the head, tax satisfactory verbal description are better appreciated in photographs and on genograms which are prepared. And yet we know that the commission never saw these photographs and never saw the x-rays. And later, when Commander Humes, who signed as the chief pathologist on this uh, autopsy, signed this autopsy, is asked by Spectre, 
Well, the photographs made available then, Dr. Humes, when Exhibit 388, the head hit, was prepared. Humes says, no, sir. Inspector says, all right. And it's dismissed. This becomes, uh, you know, a serious problem. This dramatic head hit, which propels the president leftward and backward against Newton's third law of physics, if you're saying the bullet came from the rear, is never discussed as a problem by the commission. Now, how can that be if they are able to find the facts and explain the assassination? Okay. <clears throat> All right, now, if you what want is your assumption based on this? Well, I don't think you have to make assumptions. I think you can conclude based on the evidence, which is all commission evidence, that there was an assassin, right front, a uh, physician on the grassy knoll, who killed the president with a head hit that impacted, as all the Secret Service agents who see it happen, state, on the right front of the president's head or the right parietal area. Which is here. Yes. Mm -hmm. The grassy knoll is in that direction. In the north direction. Northern direction, yes. Mm -hmm. Now there's that material which uh, indicates perhaps even photographic evidence of this occurring. We know from the commission um, testimony that 51 witnesses uh, preliminarily and now even more in the Secret Service reports uh, that have been issued recently indicate that the shots came from the north. Now I believe shots came from the Texas Coast Depository really, and I think shots came from the north. These are not mutually exclusive ideas. But the majority of witnesses say the shots came from the north. They, this was ignored. The commission said there was no credible evidence of any other assassin in any other position. Which is, from the evidence, just impossible to conceive how one can say this fairly, and infer this fairly from the evidence. People uh, smell smoke in the Nall area, smell gun smoke, saw gun smoke, heard shots, and I think maybe even in the cameras picked up what might very well be evidence of what they saw. There's a, the famous Mormon shot, which is nowhere to be found in the condition that it's nowhere. They just ignore this, which went all over the world. But here there's a, a fuzzy area on the knob. Okay. And here you see another, this is, on the next film, this is not the Mormon film, another one, there it is again. And that's exactly where, and there it is not, exactly where a puff of smoke was said to have been seen by many witnesses who testified to it. What is this over here? This is a... Uh, this is a... Well, I, I went out and... This is it here? Yeah, this is more clearly what you see there. I took that picture. Okay, so we walk there. Okay. Yes, and this is the grassy knoll, and this is the arcade from which many people... Uh, my wife is uh, standing there, essentially, where that puff of smoke ultimately appears, what appeared down here. I also have my wife uh, kneeling here. This is a very low area, 34 inches uh, in height. I have her kneeling there for a specific reason, because I thought I saw a man in the Mormon shot also kneeling. And this is tough to see, Gaten, but you see where my... I don't know, my wife's head is not there. Here. Mm -hmm. Now, on the same scale, you see what could be a white shirt, a forehead, and a face, not looking like the president was at this point being struck in the head and driven over. Can you see anything there, Gaten? Oh, you see that little white. Uh... That, well, let me tell you that I can show you evidence of a, an affidavit to the effect that a man on the building saw somebody running away with a white open shirt and with a headpiece in his hand and here's a black cloud do you see a black cloud in there well, my wife is face in front but this man seems to have almost a profile face forehead white shirt no 
Yeah, yeah, she's very definitely there. Mm-hmm. Now, you see what could be a face here and a forehead there and head, uh, a, uh, I'm sorry, a shirt open and a black rod there and a black rod there. If you don't forget it. No, no, I, I just, I see that white. Uh, okay, that thing has a, 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 a shirt. Now, my yeah. wife is not that tall, apparently, mm-hmm. and what she's doing is thus. Look. She's here, but this guy's shirt is open, and he's looking in that direction, and there are black globs here. But if you don't see it, you don't see it. At any rate, uh, it's tough. It really is. But once you see it, you see it. It's below there. But see, when I do that, you have a shadow. Look. See that black glob? Yeah, I see that. All right, there's another here. But think of those in terms of a forehead. And think of this as a white forehead. And this is a face. And this is a shirt. No. Okay. Well, when it comes, it comes. At any rate, there's evidence, and I have affidavits. When I say I have affidavits, it's always their affidavits. Uh, here again, it's the same scene. If you can see that, you probably won't see this, but in here, this is enlarged. You see anything there? Now that, if there's a man there, he's standing. The other guy is fuzzy here. This is an enlargement of this. Okay. Well, some people at any rate see a face there, yeah, shoulders, yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah. When you see my face, it's more clear. Yeah, I see, you know, yeah, I see the face there. Face here would have to be right, and hands and some kind of triangular thing here. Um, this right beside him, and you don't see him here because it comes off of another negative, is what I think is. This, is this a same photograph? Yeah, same mm-hmm. photograph. It is what I conceive of as the guy I see. And incidentally, this appeared all over Europe, uh, was published there. I didn't publish it because I like to hang to harder stuff, Caden, than this mm-hmm. when I write. But I think, in line with this evidence, which is, you don't see it, this evidence, uh, the testimony with respect to automobiles reconnoitering in this area before the assassination, the affidavits in the commission records indicating a gunman going up this knoll with a gun case, and a woolen stocking hat. Evidence here, this is the woolen shots. This is the point, just the point at which the president was receiving his first hit. Look here, over the wall. There's some kind of figure there. I don't know what it is. But look immediately after the hit. Where's the president's car? The president's car is down here. Uh, it's uh, go, There it is. There's the president's mm-hmm. car. And look here. Gone. Where the Willis slides. No, no possibility that this could be the first No. Okay. No, it's different. There's that tree, same tree. Um, now, this is evidence, and there's lots of evidence in the reports, and I can pull affidavits for you right now, and I will if you want to see them. Take me a minute. To the effect that there's lots going on on this wall, and after all, minimum 51 witnesses said the shots came from there. Uh, after all, witnesses saw smoke. Uh, photographic evidence is picked up of possible smoke. Uh, there are people who testify to people on this area, in this arcade at that time. And despite all of this, the commission concluded that no shot came from any other direction. On the other hand, the specter contribution, which you referred to earlier, was that the president and 
recall if you were hit by the same first shot that hits the president. Now that has any number of problems. First, of course, the holes in the shirt, as indicated by the picture found in Epstein's book and in uh, Epstein's book is upstairs, but let me show you. You've seen it. The holes in the shirt are down. Oh, here it is. No, are down. Mm -hmm. Fraser describes the holes down. The hole in the coat, too. Of course, the, uh, you'll, you'll see tested down there. Now, this, a bit of that, yeah. proceeding down in an angle of 17.9 degrees into the back from behind would end up coming out somewhere in the um, abdomen, mm -hmm. not in the necktie knot, which is higher than that point. And I explained that the president's coat is crumpled, which it is not, of course. And mm -hmm. you can see the real sh shot when the president is being struck. There's no evidence of that. Mm -hmm. And how they will explain that a shirt was crumpled to the extent mm -hmm. where it would be possible for the bullet to emerge uh, there, there, when the hole is down here. Mm -hmm. The inspector did not ask for the x-rays and photographs. He said it was a question of taste. Well, if you'll go through the evidence, you'll find that they discovered the most horrible rules that the commission could have seen those documents and present them to the archives where they would be seen only by scholars. But the commission did not see them. Spectre doesn't tell us whether or not he saw them. There's no evidence of whether he saw them. In any event, they are not presented to the commission. But so you have that as an initial problem. You have the problem that if it went in here and came out here, the bullet would be flying upward. And then it had to be turned downward in order mm -hmm. to hit uh, Connolly. There's no evidence at all that Connolly is hit when the president is hit. You have the problem here of, well, if this is the first shot, this is not the first shot at this point, but um, I think there's dramatic evidence of two hits in the president before you see a third hit. But let's show you. supposed to be hit as he's emerging from the sign. I think that he's hit before that. And I think there's good evidence to that effect, too. But uh, again, Gaten, in one afternoon, I can't give you all of this. But he's certainly hit at this point, the commission concludes, and he's mm -hmm. grasping for his throat. Right. Now, I see at the archives, when these pictures are projected, two movements. A grasping for the throat this way, and then suddenly a, a heaving upward of the shoulders. And you'll see it here. Look. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it here. See this extraordinarily high heaving up. Mm -hmm. By the first motion, excuse me, hello, Salandria. Yes, John. Okay, so uh, it's a hit in the neck and then a hit in the back, which are separate and apart. But of course, if you accept a hit in the neck while well, the president's facing forward, then it could not be delivered from the back, and therefore there's another assassin up there popping away in the front of the president. And they reject the hit in the neck as having anything other than uh, resulting from the, the hit in the back. Now, they have a problem there, as I indicated in my article. Uh, the problem is that the FBI report states that the hit in the back then it emerge. <laughs> Hello, Salida. Yes, will you hold on, Joe, one moment. I guess you've seen this in Epstein's book. I also dealt with it here, and here's the applicable quote from the FBI report. Yes, Joe. Okay. I may not have to bail, I may not need a bill. Uh, okay, fellow. Yes.
Well, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, Joe, call him. Right. And he'll, he'll make the payment, or he'll get the court to make the payment. Who was it? Dan Sherman? Schiller? Oh, fine. And have him call Dan Sherman. Right. Okay. No, I will, Joe. I will as soon as I can. I I'll work on it. Okay, fella. Yes, I have it. It's all in order. I it's all in order. Right you are, Joe. Bye bye. Now, in addition, Epstein of course got the files of one of the council, which indicated that not only was uh, the initial December 9th FBI report contrary to this double hit concept, but that there was a subsequent report uh, filed which also supported this proposition. And this report was, I think, January the 13th of 64, which was essentially a month later. And Spector's explanation that the FBI men dashed out and made a call has to be uh, mistaken because uh, that conceivably could explain why the FBI blundered and without having an autopsy and without having its evidence under consideration made a hasty judgment that there was no exit on the basis of what somebody said in an autopsy which was pretty impressive because he was prodding away Colonel Fink was prodding away there and said there's no exit to this wound it's assumed that the FBI made that mistake without an autopsy made its finding could it have done that a month later, more than a month later? Highly dubious. And Inspector gave that as an explanation. I think it's a totally inadequate explanation. In addition, of course, the shirt speaks for itself. The coat speaks for itself. The trajectory speaks for itself. The fact that the bullet would have to turn in midair speaks for itself. The fact that no uh, eyewitness at all suggested that Connolly was hit by the same first bullet speaks for itself. The fact that Connolly said he was not hit by the same first bullet, Mrs. Connolly said she was not hit by the same first bullet. The Zapruder films show that Connolly doesn't seem to be suffering any ill effects mm -hmm. on the hit, which is uh, registered very severely on uh, Kennedy there. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but Connolly, I wish to point out, was hit. And for this, we'll have to use my article here. Was hit thusly under the right shoulder, the entry was. Now, under those circumstances, you have a tremendous impact which drives through the fifth rib. Um, Came through. Clear through under the right nipple. Right. And yet, he makes a turn right against that and turns all the way around, as you'll notice, all the way around and faces the president against a hit here again violating newton's third law of physics which says to you know to turn against such a force you would <laughs> probably would be going in that direction as opposed to turning uh, he, he he was not hit here or was it no he's supposed to be hit substantially before that he's supposed to be hit way before that he's mm -hmm. supposed to be hit at 225 in the Pruder film, which is best uh, seen by 18. Uh, there it is. Have a look. At 225, they agree that uh, the president is struck. Can you just look at the panel in there? Hello, Salandrio. Yeah, Albert, can you give it to me in a minute? What's the score? Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. What about the $25,000 fee? Okay, now did you have to uh, agreement? That's a good deal. 
let's let's close the deal. And that means you're getting five hundred and forty thousand instead of five hundred and fifty. That's okay. Forty nine interest. That sounds great. Let's take it out. I said okay to that. Okay, well, Charlie Miller is a tough man to do business with. Okay, now that's the best deal you're going to get in a hurry. Uh, as soon as we get the papers, I'll call on and say it's all off. We'll tell him too. So let's get signed up before we do that. Now. Okay, man. No. Okay. Right out. Bye bye. Now, exactly when Kyle is hit is a question for dispute. I happen to think he's hit flush up against the Kennedy head hit. Um, but nonetheless, there's no evidence at all in support of the proposition which Spectre invented that there was a double hit. Yet without that double hit, that is the same thing as saying there was more than one assassin because so, as soon as you get more than three bullets escaped, you then get a picture of more than one assassin. Excuse me. Hello, Salandria. Yes. Yes, Dr. Messi. I'm fine, sir. How are you? Early 23rd this Thursday? Yes, that's right. Uh, I should think so. I'll, I'll get Frank Hadley at the same time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye, Dr. Messi. Now, that was kind of bizarre, and if I'm not saying that on my own authority. Uh, I really have to thank the FBI arms expert, uh, Robert A. Frazier, uh, and uh, he's talking about the double hit. I myself don't have any technical evidence which permit me to say one way or the other, in other words, which would support it, as far as my rendering an opinion of an expert in court. In other words, the FBI has no technical evidence of this double here. Mm. There's an enormous amount of technical evidence against such a proposition. And yet the commission, and this specter takes full credit for, invented the double hit concept and saved its single assassin theory against all the evidence. And I mean all the evidence. They have not walked out one eyewitness, and there are hundreds, that they were hit at the same time. They can't get Connolly to say he was hit at the same time. His wife, the FBI, to say has any technical evidence of it. They got a curious bullet, which I go into detail. And I ask you, ask my, I you read my articles for that. This is the bullet which was supposed to have rendered all that damage. Pierced the president through. Excuse me. Hello, Salandria. Yes. Hi, Mrs. Phantom. How are you? Nothing yet, Mrs. Phantom. I. Um, will you call back on Friday and I'll be able to report to you then? Right. Bye bye. Now, that bullet, Gaten, I would like to tell you, pierced the president, pierced Connolly's fifth rib, shattered his radial bone of the wrist, incidentally, and you can't see that wrist. At the time Kennedy is hit, the Connolly wrist is nowhere to be seen. Let's, let's uh, sh show you here. Oh, yeah, I'll show you the reconstruction. This is supposed to be a reconstruction, uh, a reenactment by the FBI, right? And it's 225, at which time the president is clutching at a stone that's supposed to be hit. Connolly's wrist is nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. So it's 
This bullet pierces an invisible wrist and shatters it, and the regular bone of the wrist is a particularly durable, heavy construction bone. It then deposits a fragment in the femur. There is fragment strewn throughout Connolly in the fifth rib area, in the radial bone of the wrist, and in the femur. And some are left there, and some are taken out. And the bullet is supposed to look like that, with its rifling still showing beautifully, weighing 158.6 grains, which Fraser tells us there need not be anything missing from this bullet on the basis of its weight. The maximum weight of any bullet uh, that they weighed of this caliber uh, was no more than 2.9 grains heavier than this, but this is within the range of an average bullet. What happened to those fragments? How could they have shaved off there and from that bullet, and have done all that, which did all that damage, and this bullet turned out to weigh 158.6 grains plus the fragments, which I have accumulated the evidence, indicating far more than three grains. That violates a fundamental law of physics called the law of conservation of mass, which says that the parts of any particular mass cannot weigh more than the whole of it. No problem. The commission went right ahead and concluded that this was the bullet that went down into Kennedy's back, up through his neck, down in midair, changed direction, went down at a steep uh, angle uh, in the uh, Connolly shattered rib, shattered bone, shattered in the femur, shattered itself, and came out looking so beautiful. First said to be on Kennedy's stretcher, but then realizing that it had to be on Connolly's stretcher to accomplish this thing. Spectre concluded it came from a Connolly's stretcher, and no good evidence of this. Now, this was the invention of Spectre. I suggest to you that does this indicate their integrity? I don't even go into the question of integrity. It certainly had nothing to do with what happened at the assassination. That's a much of it. And the evidence is overwhelming against the double hit. The evidence is conclusive against the double hit. And once the double hit is destroyed, and I think my articles have destroyed it, the single assassin theory is finished. Let me uh Incidentally, the easy way of settling this would be, of course, for the government to produce x rays and photographs at the archives. What do you mean? To produce the x rays and photographs at the archives where they belong. So that scholars can go and look at them. The x rays and photographs of what? Taken at the uh Bethesda at the autopsy which have never been produced. No law court in the land would have permitted any evidence on this subject until those x-rays and photographs were produced. No drawings, schematic drawings by, done by an artist would have ever been permitted in any court of law because they are secondary evidence, the primary evidence of the x-rays and photographs taken at Bethesda, and they were never produced. Of the autopsy? Yeah. I, was, I demanded in my first article that they be produced. And, uh, and first, I uh, noticed they were missing was from the notes of testimony, and that was in the April uh, Liberation article. And I have been uh, demanding them since to no avail. Who uh, has them or whose jurisdiction are they under them? It's suggested in um, the uh, Epstein book that you know, Robert Kennedy had the photographs, or had the photographs. The Secret Service, uh, last known, had them. On that score, uh, let me say this, okay. The Secret Service uh, agents told the Commission certain things that it is believed and they had certainly a job of protecting their chief and they're for good reason to tell the truth, if believed, would have destroyed the commission conclusion of one assassin. For example, uh, Kellerman said there were certainly more than three shots. He was in the right rear seat of the presidential car. Clinton Hill, of course, said that the shot in the back went six inches down. Uh, 
Greer confirmed this. Uh, Kellerman also confirmed this. Uh, Kinney says the uh, Secret Service agent Kinney says the hit came from the uh, impacted on the right uh, of the, the head. Uh, many other Secret Service agents uh, confirmed this. The Secret Service was believed. The commission could not have, if one of them was believed, could not have found the way they did. If the doctors at Parkland were believed on the question of the whole of the back, which was non existent according to them, the commission could not have found the way it did. If the commission had paid any attention to the the uh, forces and the resultant forces and the propulsion of the president's body, they could not have found what they did. The commission ignored a whole series of evidence, uh, items of evidence, because this evidence was inconsistent with his ultimate point. Excuse me, did you hear from last night? No, no. He's in good hands, I'm sure. Check around. Just uh, aside from all this, uh, I'm interested in your own work. When you first started yeah. with this and how it all came about. And well, I... Uh, uh, first undertook work when I went to Dallas late June of '64 uh, before the report was issued. Why did you do that? Because the hearings had been secret, uh, which I thought were incompatible with a democratic process and an open society. That the newspaper accounts of leaked by sources close to the commission or close to the White House, these were phrases employed uh, constantly, uh, contradicted one another drastically. That, for instance, you recall? For example, well, um, Gaten, the first uh, newspaper account uh, indicated that there was indeed a, and I can, everything I've asked you, I told you about, you can ask me for it and I can give you documentation. But I said, your newspaper accounts, I'll produce them for you, if you ask me. And I hope to. You ask me for these things, I'll give them to you when you're through. Uh, that the bullet hall entered the front of the neck, one hole, and that the president, therefore, had been turning around, facing the book depository building. Well, the uh, films indicate the contrary. This was a bad Then there was, of course, the idea that the bullet uh, went in the back and stopped there. That was in the newspapers. Stopped there, which was the ultimate FBI finding. Now this, uh, of course, was incompatible with the uh, double hit idea, because if, if it never got to the back, the back hit, then it could not have gone for the neck and therefore could not have hit Tom. Mm. What well, was talking about June? Uh, no, this is before, before June. June. That, uh, the New York Carroll Tribune story indicating that there was a man who looked like Oswald on doorsteps interests me. This was the commission said uh, William Loveletty, Billy Loveletty, who worked in the book depository building. They never showed us any pictures in the newspapers of Billy Loveletty, so I was highly dubious of this. I was finally convinced that the commission had an impossible job if they were going to conclude a uh, single assassin concept. When I read, I think in April, a newspaper account to the effect that a third man was wounded at the assassination site, James D. Tague, a bystander. Mm -hmm. When I read that, I read almost simultaneously with it the suggestion that there was a double hit. Uh, I've always felt that the necessity for the double hit came about as a consequence of the Tague hit, because you can't have <coughs> a hit on the president in the back, an unexplained hit in the front, the hit on Connolly, which could be explained on the basis of one bullet, the hit on the president's head, and another hit on somebody else with three bullets. Especially since the 
um, cage hit was substantially far from where the president and the governor were hit. 270 feet from the spot designated at the 313 frame where you see the head hit registered on the president. 270 feet from that, the uh, tag is hit. Um, off from another street, not on Elm Street, but between Main and Congress, he's standing. Uh, when this happened, when I heard of the take hit, I was convinced that the case for a single assassin was fast disappearing, and that they apprised us of the take hit so late to cause me deep concern. And I at that point felt that if I, if they were to issue any of the evidence, I would make a particular study of the hard evidence, the shot evidence, because they were going to have particular difficulties in this school if they were going to spell out one assassin. At that point, I determined I would go to Dallas, inspect the site myself, and interview some witnesses if I could. But mm -hmm. uh, apparently, you haven't explained. There are. Um, you know, how many other Philadelphia lawyers who were thinking, or who read this stuff about the, uh, the assassination in the newspapers, and who uh, probably said to themselves, well, that's interesting, uh, why don't I wait until the report comes out and find out what they say? Well, well <clears throat> I think there's always a danger in the assassination of um, political figures in a country. If Individuals don't get immediately interested. Because I thought of this assassination, I hark back to the killing of uh, Giacomo Matteotti in 1923 in Italy, the socialist leader there. The Italian people were outraged, but did not press for the killers. Mussolini was very pleasantly surprised to find that there, he considered the possibility of the need to resign his power at that time because of the outrage that uh, resulted from the assassination. But because there was no pressure, because there was no pressure on the government from the private citizens who actually produced the killers, he was more emboldened by this condition so that in 1927, he went to the Italian parliament. For the first time, he used the, uh, the word dictatorship. For the first time, he abolished all other legal opposition in the country. And the fascist party became the only legal party in Italy. I trace the uh, rise of the fascists as the sole power in Italy to the killing of Matteotti and the silencing of the opposition. In 1927, he was willing to take responsibility, and he did, <clears throat> historical responsibility for the killing of Matteotti. But by then, it was too late. But because there wasn't pressure by the Italian citizens, because the fascist party wasn't pinned with responsibility prior to that time, their power was able to build, and as a consequence, the direction of the Italian government was fixed fast. I thought you could not wait for the government, and you could not depend on the government, on any government in this kind of situation. I thought that <coughs> I have to be objective about this, that if this had happened in Smolensk or Minsk or Moscow, no American would have believed the story that was evolving about a single assassin with all the contradictions built into the facts. But because it happened in Dallas, which happens to be within the confines of the American border, too many Philadelphia lawyers and American citizens accepted it. Now, it's not true <coughs> that the Philadelphia bar accepted it, Gates. And, uh, you know, I left out for you the letter I sent with the manuscript to the then uh, uh, Chancellor and Gore. And Gore said on the air, that no matter what the commission said, and he said this prior to its 
issuance. No matter what they said, you would never believe that one man killed the president. And he said this WPAN. When was that? Do you recall when he said that? We can the exact date. It was pretty early, something like uh, January of 64. So it can't be said that the Philadelphia Bar uh, had swallowed his story whole. As a matter of fact, when I spoke to Spectre and addressed questions to him at the Bar Association meeting, uh, the overwhelming majority of questioners was overwhelmingly skeptical. And the bulletin wrote the next day how deep, uh, about how deep the skepticism ran in the Philadelphia Bar. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, in, no, I'm sure I'm the only Philadelphia lawyer who went to Dallas. Uh, why that? I'm uh, particularly sensitive uh, to uh, uh, problems of uh, possibility of uh, governments not being as diligent as they should be in situations of this sort. Why I'm particularly sensitive? I guess it comes from an Italian peasant background, which always disputes uh, governmental actions of this kind, and always is skeptical, which I think is quite in keeping with. Uh, uh, democratic citizenry, that we have to be skeptical. We have to think in terms of the individual being important in a democratic society and the individual being able to accomplish something and being able to think his way as clearly as governmental experts and perhaps more clearly because we haven't got ourselves enmeshed in the interests of governmental power. I was sensitive, particularly sensitive, you're right, to the problems here. But not without a basis. As the newspaper reports unfolded, I found them very contradictory. Full of problems, indicating that the government itself was full of problems in resolving this as a single assassin concept. In addition, um, from the very beginning, even before the shot evidence uh, looked to me to be implausible, fitting into a pattern of a single assassin. The person designated as an assassin didn't quite make sense to me. Uh, Oswald uh, did not make sense to me as depicted by the government. Uh, I immediately began uh, to see the possibilities that Oswald was somehow or other implicated with the government, perhaps serving as an agent of the government. I at least felt that that should be considered as a hypothesis. And uh, on that score, uh, there was evidence evolving, which uh, we got written up by a brother-in-law of mine, Harold Feldman in the nation, Oswald and the FBI, which Gerald Ford, in his book, Portrait of an Assassin, says was the basis for secret executive meetings by the commission because they, too, were deeply disturbed by this problem. And Epstein also indicates that this was more than rumor. Um, I felt the personality of Oswald was never adequately explained. The background of Oswald was never adequately explained. And the hypothesis that he was connected with the United States government was not fully explored. That concerned me, first of all. My original thought was perhaps this was a CIA and or FBI agent gone awry for having committed an assassination, ultra virus outside of the scope of his authority. That was my initial impression. I did not seriously question the shot evidence until I read newspaper accounts and I kept careful files. Then I realized the government had very serious problems on the hardcore shot evidence. The shot trajectories and wounds were causing them fits. This was, of course, Spectre's area. I did not know this, but this was Spectre's area. Uh, Epstein says that this was the crux of the case. It was the crux of the case. I recognized it would have to be because I knew that in handling law cases, sometimes you're not entirely sure whether your client is, in fact, sticking to what actually happened as closely as he could. What tells you that whether he is or not are the minute, tiny aspects of the evidence, which if a person is fabricating the evidence, 
you cannot think of all the details and effort to details give them away. That's been my experience. My feeling was that this was a simple assassination according to the governmental view. Three shots, one assassin, one vantage point. That the facts could come together very neatly if that were the case. However, if there were more than one, there was more than one assassin, then the details would not fit. And the details gate and do not fit. They fly away from that hypothesis. And that hypothesis is left bare of any facts. It's left standing there alone as a theory, as a speculation. And history will determine that the president was killed by ambush. And that the Warren Commission evidence indicates this. The Secret Service evidence indicates this. The FBI evidence indicates this. The wound evidence, as, just as uh, given by Parkland doctors, indicates this. The actual people in the motorcade indicated this. Um, and, in fact, the people wounded and all the eyewitnesses indicate this. That the idea of a single assassin is a theory, a theory bereft a factual covering, an invention of which Spectre takes pride, held together, glued together by the gluing together of wounds and the double hit, the weaving together of wounds, holds this structure together. But facts do not. It's invention does. What did you do in Dallas? Well, I visited the Marguerite, for example, Marguerite Oswald. Um, we went and found a witness to the tippet killing. She and I were the first ones, apparently, to, uh, to interview this witness. Her name was Aquila Clevens. And she gave a story of the tippet killing which indicated more than one person was involved. We called this information into Rankin. Marguerite did, in my presence, Rankin was the chief counsel, reading from my file card. Um, Rankin directed a letter in July after hearing Mark Lane give this evidence to uh, Hoover, I think, asking whether any governmental agency had ever been advised of this other witness. And the uh, letter came back saying, no governmental agency ever was advised, and therefore this took the form of a speculation in the report. Speculation to the effect another witness to the tippet killing. No governmental agency was ever advised. Rankin was advised in my presence by Marguerite. That, uh, I think, uh, caused me uh, deep concern as to whether the commission had any interest in finding any evidence which in any way implicated more than one person in this crime. I think they never interviewed uh, this witness, the government. Apparently not. Although she said to me that the FBI had interviewed her. I don't know whether this is a fact. Before you had spoken yes. with her? Uh, this was later written up. Uh, I would not mention her name. Uh, I consider that a confidence. She is a colored woman in Dallas. But it was written up by Pat and George Nash, Patricia and George Nash, in the New Leader articles. Uh, and therefore, uh, I mention her name now. Her name was given. What were the circumstances behind that? Uh, how did you uh, come across her? Marguerite had the information. Marguerite was investigating in her own part. She had never uh, seen her, but she knew the name. Oswald's mother? Yes. Knew, the, uh, knew where to find her, and we went there and found her. Mm -hmm. She lived around where the killing occurred? Uh, Marguerite lived in Fort Worth. Uh, Quilla Clemens, uh, yes, lived nearby, but she was working. <coughs> 
on the same block <coughs> as the killing. Actually, across the street, same block. She saw it. She saw the killing. Yes. And she said there was someone else. Yes. Present. Yes. Two people involved. <coughs> Which is perhaps borne out by the fact that there are two types of cartridges uh, found at the scene. The tip of the killing. Yeah. Where is that evidence? It's in the report. All of this evidence is in the report. Mm -hmm. What else did you do in Dallas? Um, I should really look at my notes. Well, we uh, try to retrace the route of um, Oswald, uh, timing the, the time it took us, timing our trip. It was um, very difficult. It had to be done on a double, but conceivable. Uh, we uh, scrutinized the assassination site, took some pictures, um, tried to, to interview uh, the government's main witness to the Tippett killing. I interviewed her, Helen Louise Markham. She said that she'd be happy to talk to me, but I would have to come back because there was a babysitting problem. And um, when I came back there in the afternoon, there were two uh, um, station wagon loads of Dallas policemen pulling away from her house. And uh, she, at that point, refused to talk to me. Interesting, because when I went back a year later, I uh, just wanted to see whether she still was living in the same house. And uh, she saw me, and uh, she said, that, um, did you want to talk to me? I said, uh, no, Mrs. Markham, I did not want to talk to you. Said, well, if you want to talk to me, I've got a babysitting problem. I'm afraid I've heard that routine before, and I've left without trying to talk to her. She seems to be a pathetic woman. Um, Moore, one of the assistant counsel of the commission, has called her a screwball. Perhaps that's harsh uh, language. Let's say she's a woman under tremendous pressure. Um, uh, she advised me that she had, uh, her son advised me. <clears throat> he walked me down the first time I saw him. I came down the steps and was willing to talk to me and did talk to me. And said that <clears throat> uh, after I had, <clears throat> excuse me, talked to her and left, and instead of trying to settle her babysitting problem, she had called first the uh, FBI and the Secret Service and then the Dallas Police. So she wasn't really interested in talking to me. What else did we do? We looked at the uh, various spots where Oswald was supposed to have been after the assassination. Tried to talk to uh, the people who had witnessed uh, him running away, uh, what was alleged to be Oswald running away from 10th and Patton, the scene of the Tippett killing. Uh, talked to Marguerite extensively about uh, Oswald's background. She was convinced, you know, that he was a CIA agent. Checked out some of the uh, business about whether he had actually read to the Capitol when he was 16 years of age. Found out that uh, unless uh, Capitol has been reduced from the multi-volume work into a pamphlet size thing, he never did read Capitol was reported in the press, that uh, found out uh, that his, his advocation was purely and simply to become a U.S. Marine, that he had, uh, in fact, uh, been approached by a warrant officer in the Marines very early and uh, apparently groomed 
for enlistment, that was his only aspiration that he ever had. The family had uh, been uh, very extremely patriotic, had very good military service records. Um, but I tried to determine what the, tried to piece together some aspects of his life. I stayed a uh, number of days with Marjorie. listen to what she had to say, what her theories were. Did what I could was in a limited amount of time, uh, in a very hot Dallas, to find out uh, from witnesses you know, what happened in the assassination. Didn't find too much. How long were you there? Ten days. The whole day was ten days, so you were there probably about seven or seven, eight. Um, Did you speak to any witnesses who saw the actual assassination? Or? No, I did not. The uh, book depository was closed to visitors. It was um, not what I thought would be the most useful work. I expected that we would be hearing uh, eventually what those witnesses said, and we have complete uh, records on them. Mm -hmm their interrogations by the FBI and the Secret Service. You did nothing then after you came back until the FBI no. report came out? No, Jake, no, I was, uh, I felt, uh, I had to wait. I wrote to Congressman, a senator, asking that, uh, uh, in Congress, the question of the long delay in the secret hearing be raised, but to no avail. You wrote to whom? Well, Gate and I'd rather not put any particular senator on the spot, but I was corresponding over a period of time with a senator on the case. No response from him. No response until after articles. I started to publish articles, then responses. What was your first article? Was this uh, first article legal? was legal intelligence. Mm -hmm. Then the liberation, January liberation, April minority one, March minority, or yeah, March and then April again, sixty-six. How about the? Uh, I saw Carbon uh, in there of your uh, letter to Voorhees. You said something about uh, him telling you in a nice way to mind your mouth. Oh, that you saw that Carbon. Okay, that wasn't the first one. Well, my original, original uh, uh, manuscript, they got to do now, uh, took issue with the specter on what the job of the citizen is in a democracy. This was a, you're talking about a manuscript prior to the first legal. Yeah, which uh, took issue with Spectre, who said that um, the public would have to uh, accept the status of the. Uh, Commission and be guided by that. Well, uh, well, you mentioned that in your legal article. Yeah, I mentioned that in your legal article. I did it more strongly than that. And he asked that I not be personal. I thought that was a well made point. I don't think personalities have much to do with this. I, I would not like to uh, suggest here that this is a matter of personality. It is not. For example, to make a uh, perhaps unhappy analogy, in the 30s there were purge trials in Russia of uh, the Trotskyists, or people designated as Trotskyists, uh, 
Moscow, held in Moscow. I like to uh, think that uh, the people designated as the culprits by the Russian government were doomed. No matter what evidence there was, it was not against them. And no matter who the prosecutor was, the result was ultimately the same. So I too think that with respect to the Warren Commission, it's not important who did that work. The result would have been the same. After your articles uh, began being published, um, did you get any correspondence from anyone connected with the commission at all on the staff? Did you write any letters to Rankin or to anyone else on the staff asking them for explanations of this? Well, I know that these articles were. I have letters from the staff members, which I can show you. The articles were forwarded by other people. Uh, if you want, I'll show you one from Cooper. No evidence of any other assassin with the uniform response. They consider it all. There's no evidence. I wrote this. I we had the same bar with Spectre and I for a while, and I uh, knew he was busy with an election, and he agreed uh, with the barber that he would see me after the election, and I directed a letter to Spectre saying I'm ready now after the election, and they ignored. You wrote to him yeah. after the election, inviting him to dinner. Inviting him to dinner. Yeah. Uh, no answer. Have you ever seen him since? Well, I bumped into him. I don't think he recognized me. At the Bar Association cocktail party yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. uh, well, you, you didn't uh, go up to him and... Uh... No, no. I have, uh, however, uh, I know that people have tried to arrange uh, discussions with him and me. Once at a uh, synagogue. I know that uh, WCAU at Harvey show was trying to do it at this point. Uh, I'm very willing to discuss this at any time, anywhere with them, preferably in private. But uh, I don't think there's any interest. Well, the only comment I've ever seen by him is, uh, is that New York Times article on the Epstein book in which he claims he hasn't read the book. It's 26 volumes. Yeah, no, the... Uh, the Epstein book. Yeah, he hasn't read the book. Oh, I yeah. yeah, I believe that was the only quote. Uh, no, he says if Epstein had read the 26 volumes, he. Oh, did he? Yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. right. He said that on. Uh, no, he said that on TV. You should know that he made a statement on TV. No, he didn't. I don't. But the evidence indicates one assassin. Well, I've read the 26 volumes. The evidence indicates more than one assassin. The evidence indicates conclusively more than one assassin. Um, I mentioned this head hit. I don't know whether it, uh, there's a lot more to it than what I discussed. Uh, I tried to be more graphic and then uh, involve myself in the minutiae there. The wounds are uh, extremely interesting because in, in, there's no small hole, but it's an enormous gaping, revulsive hole. The back of the head is gone, and I can prove this from all the evidence. But the back of the head gone means an exit to the wound, which you'll see some indication of that in the last part of my April article on liberation. Let's skip those details. The important thing is that the president was shot backward and leftward, propelled that way. That was never considered by the commission. Now, they were supposed to have considered all the evidence. The staff, Spectre, was supposed to. And that is something that's so patent, so dramatic, that if that is never discussed, how can they argue that, you know, the critics are failing to recognize all the evidence? If we had seen all the evidence, we would be. And it was their job to present all the evidence to us, to the American public. They are holding, you know, the government is withholding one of, the, of every three documents from the archives. They're not available to the archives still. One of the three documents. I can show you a microfilm of the index, and you'll see checks, checks, withheld. 
If this was such a simple assassination, if in fact it was one disenchanted um, individual, if not demented, uh, then certainly a maladjusted, who alone, without any co-conspirators, shot the president, then there's certainly no need for concealment. But there's extensive concealment still. Not peripheral concealment, basic stuff like the x-rays and photographs, fundamental, basic material, without which no prosecution could ever prove any case for even petty larceny in any court of law. Which is absent here, continues to be absent. And the, uh, the handling of the evidence is grotesque, as I point out. The cuddly clothing was dry cleaning, which is the rough equivalent of wiping off fingerprints from a murder weapon. Jung certified the burning of autopsy notes. He describes them as burning of uh, preliminary draft notes, or the burning of a preliminary draft of autopsy. Now, well, this is inexcusable. This is vital historical evidence. The moral rumor seems clear that what was burned was the original autopsy on which the FBI had to base its findings. I can't believe that the FBI would be so stupid as to conclude that that bullet never exited without asking to see the autopsy. It looks more and more like government agents burned the autopsy, mm -hmm. the first autopsy. Uh, has anyone else been working with you on this? Not until now. But, uh, you know, Ira, Einhorn, and certain of his friends have now approached me. And we are thinking of undertaking an analysis of a report and combination, uh, which will look at the report and measure it up against solid scientific methodology. What would the report have done and how should it have been written and how should it have considered the evidence if it had conformed to scientific methodology? And contrast that with what actually the report does look like in the form it did take. And to kind of to try to reconstruct in a kind of literary inquest what the evidence shows actually did happen at the assassination site in the Plaza in Dallas, November 23rd, 1963. What actually did happen as is indicated by the evidence. And for that purpose, we are going to examine material in the archives and re-examine all the evidence dealing with the shots, trajectories, and wounds, and try to put together the actual picture of a crossfire, which actually did happen, and a combination of assassins firing on the president and killing him which was the case, and which is borne out by the Warren Commission evidence. We don't intend to use anything but Warren Commission evidence. It's all there. They just chose to ignore it, chose to overlook it. And where problems could not be overlooked or ignored, evidence was excluded and other evidence fabricated. Um, have you uh, had any indications uh, that uh, this is my phone. Sorry. <laughs> 
have you had any indications, or have you uh, been actually uh, contacted by uh, any government agency? No, no uh, contact, uh, no harassment, uh, no problems at all, and uh, no support, no opposition, no contact, no interest apparently. And I consider that fine. I, I could not ask for better treatment on that score. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed also one of your, uh, in your, in your material, the uh, a, le uh, a letter to uh, Clark, Senator uh, Clark. Uh, did you, were you looking for material that I showed you there? The material that you had left here. Okay, I didn't know that was there. What was that about? Uh, just asking him for a, uh, a reply, I believe. You had not gotten a reply yet from him to something you sent him. Let's see. I don't think I understood. You're welcome to look at the matter. Yeah. That's very early, isn't it? November 4th. November 4th. This was prior to the um, the publishing of the legal article. Yeah. Uh, but I imagine you had worked up. There was quite a lot of correspondence. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had any uh, answer at all from him? Yes, I've gotten an answer mm -hmm. since. What, what did he say? Gee, you know, David, I should show you letters. Um, he is he is always very courteous. Uh, gives me credit for vast knowledge of the assassination. But uh, last account on the subject of uh, who did it, which was pretty early, still predisposed, quote him, to believe the Warren Commission. Still predisposed to believe the Warren Commission. But I, again, um, he hasn't figured in any way other than, uh, may I say, I asked him to clear the way for me into the archive to do research, and he uh, took steps to make it possible for me to go there and uh, cooperate in this respect. No complaints about him either. That letter uh, uh, just got shuffled in there. Uh, at that time, I had written him a whole series of letters in which I got no response. Uh, that was the last one, I think. Uh, on that score. From then on, I have been answered all the time. When the articles start to appear. I have not received any uh, letter or communication by phone or personal communication from anybody which was in any way adverse or critical. Uh, I think that says something about our society. The fact that, you know, uh, I have taken to say to uh, the American public that uh, a commission organized by its government uh, has done a terrible botch, and the American public is willing to let people say that. Uh, and the people who have uh, know this, and I assume believe there are size of home substantial know that I've been working on it. Not one has seen fit to in any way harass me. I think that says something about the mood of the American people. It's pretty healthy. Uh, I wish the uh, government uh, trusted uh, the American people substantially enough so that it could uh, level with them on matters such as an assassination of head of state, because I have an enormous trust in the American people. Uh, I think they are good, uh, solid, uh, skeptical uh, citizens. Um, I think that if you get a cross-section of the American public, in many respects the people who are interviewed uh, by the FBI, the Secret Service, and the Commission attorneys represent that professional man working people, middle class people, and the medical doctors, the police agents, the secret service agents, uh, the governor, uh, pretty 
make a cross section. But those people please me enormously. I don't think there's any country in the world that has gotten so many people telling so much of the truth to a governmental agency which pretty clearly we're not interested in it. It's remarkable, really remarkable that really truth means so much to individual American citizens. That despite the fact that the official version of the story was promptly given to the whole world, and they knew they were flying in the face of this official version by giving the evidence as they saw it. They, in fact, courageously went in and told the commission it was mistaken. Not only private citizens, but secret service agents. You know, secret service agents who continued their connection with the government did this. I defy uh, anybody to come up quickly with uh, another country where it's secret police would act in that fashion. So my faith in the American people as a consequence of uh, doing this work has been enormously bolstered. I'm pleased with what I find in the individual American citizen. In fact, I'm not totally displeased with what I find uh, in the uh, police agents of the state who are willing to go in and uh, like Kellerman told the commission, gentlemen, there were certainly more than three shots. Of course, they were quick to, Spectre was quick to show him how he was mistaken. I think he was very right. Uh, but this takes a rare kind of courage. You find it in America. So I, uh, I was indeed also pleased by the way the uh, government treated the critics. It let the critics go along their way. No critic has been hurt, to my knowledge. No investigator has been seriously harassed, to my knowledge. Uh, there has been not even a semblance of a threat made. And that speaks well for the government. You know? I uh, like to think that uh, the government was split on this subject. I cannot think otherwise, in view of the issuance of the 26 volumes and the establishment of an archives, even of uh, information in the archives, even though it's stripped of much that it's vital and confident. Nonetheless, what is there so fractures the governmental case that I cannot think otherwise than that the government is split on this, otherwise this material would not be available to private citizens. Well, certainly giving me enough to digest for... Oh, again, we've got a problem here. You've mm -hmm. really got a problem. Uh, this stuff is... Uh, that's not impossible to figure. But it's going to take work on your part. Uh, are you really interested in uh, correspondence? I'll dig stuff out of that interests you. Uh, you... Well, let me... Uh, you shouldn't identify senators, I think. I have a letter from a congressman who's essentially convinced very early. I wouldn't want to mention. Um, I, uh, I don't know which way you want to approach this. Well, this is what I'm going to have to figure out. Too. I've got lots of material, tons of material. Mm -hmm. Suppose I am. Um, I sit down with what I have now and uh, just get the basics of the thing. May I suggest that uh, absolutely reckless it is to try to understand the shot trajectories mm -hmm. before you write. I mean, read Epstein's book, but uh, I don't want to be arrogant, but Epstein, you know, uh, has been uh, consulting with me. And what he did was just take one little segment of an mm -hmm. article of mine, and he admitted this is what he did, and he promised to get full credit, but didn't. But that's not important. The point is that he's just discussing one facet of the shot's trajectory, and that is the hole in the back, the neck, and not even the comedy bones. So I urge you to uh, read the article. Uh, and uh, at least come to grips with what I've been trying to do in terms of digging up what Spectre did. He happened to do it, you know. And coming to a entirely different conclusion. 
Okay, well, I really appreciate you Thank taking you all this, sorry, I kept all this time. Yeah, yeah, and the fact it just uh, struck my mind that I hope I'm not in a towway zone. <laughs> I'm parked on the place.